it was a very disappointing film because you open up the film. Did you see Food Inc? And, and, and it's a big hit around the United States now. And it opens up in a diner. And the director and producer of the film is, you see a hamburger being made, cheeseburger. And then you start to see him eating the cheeseburger and he says, growing up this is my favorite food. Today this is my favorite food. I thought, that's how you're opening a film? So he promoted organic beef. And I'm thinking, well, what about the spirit of the animal? What about the environmental footprint? If you grow a local potato organically, one pound potato costs you 60 gallons of water. One pound of beef, which is not grown locally, but averages 1,400 miles to get to where you're going to eat it, is 12,200 gallons. 60 gallons, 12,000 gallons. Fiber, alpha lipoic acid, calcium, protein, good quality uh, uh, amino acids, and over here, growth stimulating hormones, antibiotics, no fiber, too much protein, urea, ammonium, building up in the kidneys. Why do you think everyone on the high protein diets are sick? Yeah, they may lose a little weight, but ask them, do you have fatigue? Yeah, I got fatigue. Are you bloated? Yeah, you got swelling. Yeah, wake up in the morning, you're puffy. Yeah. That's because you're overloading the body when you have animal proteins, including eggs and dairy, with too much nitrogen, ammonium. The byproducts of these animal proteins are very, very dangerous, and they can hurt your kidneys. Why do you think kidney disease was unknown as a major disease around the 1920s? And today, Because people weren't eating a lot of animal protein. Today, it's right up at one of the major killers. Soft drinks and animal proteins together and you've got major problems with your kidneys. And why do we have so much liver disease? Because everything you take in, the liver has to filter. Every chemical, every additive in the animal proteins has to go through the liver. And what are two of the major causes of disease today? Acrylamides. That's what you get when you have a bun, toast, a bagel, white bread. Any carbohydrate that is heated above 150 degrees, a chemical reaction called acrylamides occurs. That is pro-inflammatory. That leads to inflammation. Inflammation causes free radicals. Free radicals destroy the cells. Approximately 10,000 gene alterations per gene per day. Now do the math. You have 100 trillion cells. Each one of those 100 trillion cells is going to have a gene alteration 10,000 times per day. That's why you get disease. That's why you have arthritis or heart disease or epithelial destruction of your arteries, dementia, Alzheimer's. That's why you get it. The free radicals destroy the cells, but what causes the free radicals? Well, you can't solve free radicals because free radicals are going to be created every time you inhale. You inhale, oxygen comes in, you exhale, carbon dioxide goes out. The exchange between oxygen and carbon dioxide creates free radicals. And that creates oxidative stress. But when you eat food that is concentrated in, in pro-inflammatory agents, you really take it off the chart. So let's say normal living, you're at a one or two. You have a glass of alcohol, you jumped it up to 90. You have a hamburger with that, like a beer and a hamburger, now you're at about 130. So I can deal with normal aging by taking antioxidants. I can have fresh fruits, the berries. I can have the elagic acids. I can have the pro and some grapes or grape juice or concentrates. That will trap those free radicals, vitamin C. That will trap the, anti uh, the trap free radicals. Quercetin traps the free radicals. Quercetin and vitamin C together create new collagen, the connective tissue of your body. The more vitamin C, the more uh, bioflavonoids, the tighter your skin because the musculature of which your skin hangs, if you've ever seen a skinless you know, uh, image of a body, you see all this muscle. That muscle is what causes you to look old. So when the muscle starts to lose its elasticity and drops, the skin that's on it folds. You get jowiness, you get the wrinkles. So if you have vitamin C at about 10 to 20,000 milligrams a day, if you have quercetin at anywhere from, let's say, 2,000 to 5,000 a day, and that's normal. If I'm working with a patient, and if I see that they're sick, 
I'll take them up to 200,000 milligrams and have helped people overcome cancers. I'm working with a woman now, her name's um, Marie McGovern. She had end-stage Alzheimer's. I mean, when she came and we filmed them, because now everyone I work with I film. Why? Because I can't tell you how frustrating it's been in my lifetime when I've cured people of every disease there is and their doctor says, well, you didn't get cured. You can't be cured of this. You just didn't have it. So he was treating you for something you didn't have. So now, I only treat terminally ill people. they got to bring their records. So if they say, well, you didn't have a cancer, then you got a big lawsuit against Sloan Kettering. And all those chemotherapists who give you all those drugs didn't work because you didn't have a cancer. Now, these people have a cancer because we also film them. You'll see a wasted away body. Well, here's a woman drooling like this. Couldn't hold her head up and uh, couldn't tell me anything about herself. But her person who was driving her out to Indiana to put her into a nursing home for Alzheimer's patients, by the way, the same level of Alzheimer's as Ronald Reagan or Charlton Heston at the end. She couldn't go, she couldn't cook because she wouldn't know how. She couldn't brush her teeth, she didn't know how. Couldn't comb her hair, she didn't know how. Couldn't put her clothes on, she didn't know how. She couldn't go outside because she wouldn't remember that she lived where she just... She couldn't turn around and say, I live there, I just came out. That's what Alzheimer's does. It disconnects you from every sense of reality in life. So they were putting her in this home. But on the way to that home, her caregiver heard about a show I was doing and going to do a health support group for uh, mentally challenged people with Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, ALS, uh, multiple sclerosis, and dementia. Brought her. So this was the first night, and she had to be helped up the steps. She was with a walker. She had been at NYU, the Rush Center. Uh, she had been at Columbia University, Presbyterian, with, for the Alzheimer's group. Mm -hmm. The best they could do is get her to read at three-year-old level. I'm talking about a little three-year-old. You know, like Vic and Jane. That's the only level she could read, but she couldn't even remember what she read. By the way, this is a woman who, in her main life, was one of the brightest scholar art historian curators in America. Imagine when you went into a museum where you had purchased paintings and now you went in and you just saw colors on a canvas couldn't define what the painting was. Well, today I presented her on stage with a group of scientists from around the world and it was interesting because the scientists there were talking about getting more research for stem cells to help people improve some cognitive ability with Alzheimer's. So I just brought, I said, well, before you go into all this, how about seeing a woman who's reversed Alzheimer's? Suddenly you could hear a pin drop. Thousands of scientists. This just recently up in Washington, D.C. And she came out, she took phone time. I'm Marie McGovern, and I had full-blown Alzheimer's, and today I don't. And uh, it's been about 13 months. And uh, I was put on a vegan diet. I was given juices every day a gallon to two every day to drink of fresh organic juices. I was detoxed. I was given nutrients like coenzyme Q10 and NADH and, and L-carnitine and phosphatidylserine and, and the amyloid plaque in my brain began to dissolve and plaque in my arteries began to dissolve and I now have, I don't have the arthritis I had, the fibromyalgia, all these conditions cleared up. Well, when it was over, it was interesting. We walked out and 500, 600 scientists follow us out of the room. They want to know what was going on. So the good news is that we're reversing every type of disease and we're proving it by the standards that science demands and deserves and offering them up for the challenge. Just like I have a new study on hair and skin, reversing balding, thinning, and graying in a large group of people. It's being published. It's being presented at the American Academy of Anti-Aging Medicine. We took a group of people with a vegan diet. Mind you, all of this has something in common. It all starts with a new platform. Rebuild your DNA. Turn off those cell, uh, cell challenges. Rejuvenate the cells that have been damaged. Well, they said you couldn't do this. Well, I'm here to say you can do that. You can reverse anything. You could have full head of hair, natural color, all the wrinkles gone, energy back, muscle mass back in about two years, if you did it all. But the trouble is in our society, we tend to be lazy. We don't want to do anything that creates discomfort. The moment we hit discomfort, we pull back. 